Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. Now, it's real time. Welcome back, everyone. We've got Joel Strickland. He's with Surviving Duck Season. He's a YouTuber. You can find him there. And if you are into waterfowl content, you've got to find him if you haven't already. Uh, again, Joel Strickland. Joel, how are you doing this morning? Doing great today. Thanks so much for having me. You know, and for us in the Northwest, you're in Arkansas, so everybody understand, he, you're, you're not even hunting right now. You guys are in a bit of a break, aren't you? Yeah, we've got a break. We, we go out the first, uh, we have, our first season is the week of Thanksgiving, and it closes out the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and then we have about a two-week break, so we don't go back till next Saturday. Yeah, very interesting on how everything is run around the country, everyone. We have it kind of good here uh, in the Northwest, 107-day seasons, you know, seven bird bag limits for ducks. And uh, you, we don't even want to talk about goose hunting over here because our goose hunting over here is a nightmare. We got millions of them. They just don't let us chase them in a lot of places, which is crazy all by itself, Joel. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's very interesting how, based on different regions throughout the country, we do things differently when we're trying to go after mallards or ducks in general, geese for that matter. Uh, so there, there's very little comparison between how, or maybe the style that you like to use in Arkansas as to what we might do up here in the Northwest. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of people say, well, a duck is a duck, you know, a mallard duck or, you know, pick your species, they're all the same anywhere you hunt. And while they may look the same, uh, we tend to change up our tactics based on the time of the season that it is, the time of the migration, uh, the weather, and then, you know, the location, because a duck will respond to things differently based on what he's doing at that time of the season. So, yeah, I, I've had the opportunity of hunting all over North America, and I really enjoy getting to see how the locals do it, and the locals do it right. I mean, that's just the bottom line, and, and you can take what you see somebody else do, whether it's somebody on YouTube or somebody that you know in another part of the country and maybe steal a few ideas from them. But the, what it comes down to is the ducks are gonna respond best to the tactics that work for most people in a specific area because they got it dialed in. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a lot like fishing, and, and, I, and Joel, I'm not sure if you're aware, but this show, my show after GPS, you know, 90% of the time we're talking about fishing because we have very interesting hunting opportunities in Oregon and Washington. We won't get into that one right now, will we, everyone? It'll embarrass us over here in the Northwest, trust me. Uh, but when we have this opportunity, you know, a lot of us don't get to see what gets done in other parts of the country, let alone, uh, you know, Arkansas, the, the, arguably the most famous spot state in the world when you're talking about uh, hunting waterfowl. Um, so is it another safe statement to say that if I came down which I'm hoping to do, not hoping, I am, in uh, January with the folks from High and Dry to come meet Joel in person at, at his place right there, Lost Break Duck Club. Uh, I, I get to try something and see something that I've never done before. So I'm super excited about that. I want to learn what he does to maybe take a little piece of what he does uh, and utilize it for what I do here uh, in the Northwest. Again, very different uh, areas. But when that actually happens, Joel, when folks come to see you, say at your club, right, where you get a chance to guide, he's a professional guide, everyone. Uh, I, I, quick side note, man, I got to throw it out there. Do you spend any time on public land? Not much. Ah, I don't have time because I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking people out every day at duck season. Yeah, you know what? I just love that. And, and that's one of the reasons why I really gravitated to your videos because you keep things so honest and legit at what it is that you do educational wise and again going back to what i was saying there everyone um i want to be able to learn what he does there and maybe take a piece of that and use it here vice versa uh right but have you ever been up here in the northwest joel i've hunted uh i've hunted waterfowl in washington and idaho um i haven't i haven't duck hunted in oregon i have uh, done some big game hunting in oregon but i haven't waterfowl hunted out there yet and I, i'd love to do so uh, it, it sucks. It's terrible. We're doing that, you know, everyone out there, you don't want to come to the Pacific Flyway. It's no good. <laughs> if you were to say, since my viewers, of course, are here in the Pacific Northwest, you had a chance to see Idaho, Washington, very, very similar, if not the same here as in Oregon. Did you notice a difference between what you do in Arkansas and what we do here? Yeah, I mean, of course, 
the pressure that y'all have is not anywhere close to what we have, you know, is in Arkansas. I mean, it's just, and, and thus y'all have a longer season, you have a higher bag limit. And so that's incredible. I mean, I think that's awesome. I, I feel like I'm outlawing when I come out there to be able to shoot seven ducks in one day. I mean, that's like crazy to me. I get it. But, but you know, I mean, the, the places that I've been to, uh, you know, the, the guys have, have their places dialed in. It's mostly been public hunting. I've had a, I mean, a private hunting. I've, I've hunted a little bit public, but most of it's been private hunting. And the guys have it dialed in their places on the X, uh, you know, and the ducks, you know, they come in. And it's it's just incredible, but yeah, I, I think that uh, what what I what I was surprised about, at least the places that I've been to, is that the most of the guys think of their place is a is a wintering area. You know, we're hunting in January, and it feels like you know if you're hunting further north, that that ought to not be the wintering area. You think of the wintering area as further south. At least that's what we do in in the Mississippi Flyway. And so I thought that was very interesting that. Washington and Idaho have ducks in January and they're not blown through and all the way down to, you know, wherever California or South, you know, further South. That's a great observation. I mean, quite honestly, the only reason why that actually happens here is we got a lot of food. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and the way the weather patterns are, it takes a pretty significant amount of cold snow, ice, whatever, for a handful of days to really panic them, you know, get them out of here because they've got enough food to get by. Now there's a lot of different reasons for that. You and I were talking yesterday uh, about the show, what we might cover, and you brought up a really interesting point about calls, right? That nine out of 10 of us are using a, uh, excuse me, a mallard call 99% of the time. And you have some interesting thoughts on that for folks that might be watching, what might even be a viable option, uh, uh, no matter where it is that they're hunting, a viable option as opposed to just the old standard mallard call. Yeah, I, you know, we we I've always been the guy that that has quite a few different calls, not just mallard calls, but I, I like to use a Drake whistle, a mallard Drake whistle that makes that you know that sound that they make. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll carry a wood duck call when I'm hunting in the woods where we see some wood ducks, uh, and and lots of teal calling and and gadwall, and uh, oftentimes we'll use different calls, even if my, my target species may be mallards, but if I have myself or one of the other guys in the blind with me peeping on, you know, one of the peeping calls, it, it, it's very, very effective in bringing in birds in and goose calls. I can't tell oh. you how many ducks I've called in using a speckle belly or a Canada goose call. That's a great point. It's one of my secrets, man. Shush. For a pintail, for a pintail for us over here, you know, pintail or pintail, they'll drive you nuts. Mm -hmm. I don't it probably mm -hmm. is the same where you are. I mean, they'll whirl around, whirl around, and just we call it pintail being pintail. They'll drive you bonkers. But they relate to geese so often that it it, it does work a lot. Not always. It does work a lot to use your Canada call. And we have a lot of cacklers over here, so we might do a cackler call or whatever, just to kind of trip their trigger, right, to get their attention as opposed to just a mallard call that they might be hearing from somebody within 100 yards in any direction. I mean, that, that it does make sense. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I can't tell you how many times I'll be calling at a group of speckle bellies, trying to get them to work in, and all of a sudden some ducks will just dump right into the decoys, and I'm calling the shot on ducks instead of waiting on the specks to come in. Okay, that was my. I was going to ask you, what would you rather have? So geese or a, a, a flock of mallards come through? Yeah, it it just depends. I mean, again, if if we're try if we're on a duck hunt and we're trying to finish out our limit, then let's finish. Let's get the ducks in. Yeah. Uh, you know, but a lot of times it's a anything goes kind of day, and we've already shot a few ducks. Let's let's get some geese in and try to kill them. Yeah, I get it, man. It's. it's it... I, I, that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about coming down and meeting you in person, because I'm really in January here in Oregon. Unless the world just literally falls off the side of the table, which who the heck knows these days, uh, we're going to have a lot of mallards here, but I want to see how, how Joel does it. Right? I, I want to be able to say that I was actually in Arkansas at some point in time in my life to hunt ducks, because that's my favorite thing in the whole world to do. And maybe it's something that you should consider as well, not necessarily Arkansas, unless you wish to go there, but going to different places, seeing different things, seeing how people do things differently than maybe what you do, like Joel has already mentioned, will make you a better waterfowler in the long run. And also, being willing to try something different to talk to them is 
can be just an absolute killer opportunity or option, especially if you're in a pressured area. At least that's what I've come across. Everyone stick with us. Joel, don't go anywhere. When we come back, I want to talk to Joel about sub-gauge shotguns. And he's actually made a move way away from a 12-gauge. We'll find out what that is and maybe why he made that change. Joel, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, everyone, with more Outdoor GPS. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by Chevy Silverado and the impressive new TurboMax engine. Flex your muscle with the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. Official truck of Outdoor GPS.